So, for example, you know, let's say oftentimes you have variables that hold true or false values. And let's say that we have a variable called mega Satan key, and that is a false or a true variable. And this just means that if this variable is true, then we can visit the boss and fight the boss. And of course, if this variable is false, then we can't fight the boss. And we could do something like this, of course. If mega Satan T is true, then, uh, of course, then it has to be here. Then print uh, fight the boss. And of course, if this is not true, can't fight the boss. And this is all fine and dandy. Of course, this is something that uh, that probably happens in, inside when you're playing the game. But you don't need this equals true. Because remember, this either results to a true or a false boolean value. And because this already is a true or false boolean value, you don't even need this here. So you can just leave it as a variable. You don't need to equate it to anything. This is just a little trick, you know, maybe it improves visibility of the code, in my opinion. And it is, it's just something I think that a lot of people, maybe you see this somewhere and then you get confused why is there not, not something like this, but that's only because this variable is already a Boolean value and for an if statement to work, of course, the result of this has to be a Boolean value. So this is just maybe a shorthand approach. I know some people prefer this again, just writing it like this. Some, some people prefer doing it like this because it makes it more clear. And you know, you can do whatever you want. I'm just pointing out the fact that this exists and that whenever you see it, it's not a mistake or anything. It's just a different way of approaching a situation. Okay, so now that we covered the if statements or some basic of the if statements, I just want to show you a few more things that I didn't have the chance to mention before. So one useful one useful thing is that if you want to find a way of finding how long your string is or later on arrays, what we can do is actually use this little keyword. It's called, it's a hash and you put it before a string and what ends up happening is that this it will return you a value of how long your string is. So in this case, you see when we write hash word, because our banana word has six letters, it outputs the number six. And of course, if you said something like ban, ban, I guess, uh, the output would be three. So this is just something that you might find useful when you maybe you're trying to do something. And of course, I didn't have a chance to explain it before. So here it is. Another thing I wanted to mention that I also didn't have a chance to mention before is coercion. And I just want to do this because we're going to be using it in an example. And I always feel like this is these are some practical functions and things that are very good to know if you're trying to do something useful with Lua. So what is coercion in a sense? Well, a coercion, uh, you mentioned, I mentioned types in the previous video and I mentioned that there are a lot of types, but I never mentioned how these types get uh, assigned to a variable. And of course you say, if it's a number, it's a number, right? So there's nothing to be done here, but I'll, I'll give you a following example. If you just do something like this, a is I or read, and we will print out the type of a as we read it. And let's say we enter, of course, the word banana, we get a string and that's right, because of course, banana is a string. But if you enter something like five, it's still a string, right? You might be like, okay, you know, but I obviously used this IO read and it was able to do math operations. And that's because what Lua does, it's, it's smart enough to be able to kind of transform strings into letters if we're performing operations with them. So even if it, this is a string and we say A plus uh, three, for example, uh, Lua is able to Lua is able to calculate this, even though it's a string as an eight, because it tries to convert the number. You see, it sees that you're trying to do a math operation, and it okay, so maybe this is a number. So it checks if it's a number, and of course, if it's a number, then we get an eight. So let's just say that we have a very simple calculator, and uh, what we want to do is kind of check, uh, or not check, but uh, we want to add these two numbers together. And of course, like I said, if we enter two numbers, everything is five, fine, right? Three and five and or four and five. And the result is nine. And that that's all well and good. But what would happen if we were a bit naughty and mean and we would enter the word uh, banana and, and four? And of course, this is an error because uh, Lua does not know how to transform a, the word banana into a number. So there, there's a few things that we can do to kind of improve on that. 
So let's say that we want to check that our entered numbers are actually numbers. And what we could do is use a function called do number. So this is exactly what Lua does when he tries to convert a number into, into a, uh, a, a string into a number. It uses a function or in the background somewhere that tries to convert it to a number. And if, if you just outputted the types of our variables now, uh, you know, as the name might suggest, they have turned into numbers. So they just enter two numbers. And of course you can see that two, that both types here are actual numbers. So that's good, you know, that means that now, of course, there, there will be no problems when we try to enter words. But of course, that is not correct, you know, there's still an error. But the thing is now, now we are sure that we have numbers inside. So, and you can see because we entered the word banana, this does not, this is not a string anymore, but this becomes the type nil. And we can use this to our advantage when we actually try to compare if both letters are numbers. So what we could do here, for example, to check if both variables or numbers is write a code like this and of course this would work I, not work but it would check if uh, the, the both values we've entered are numbers of course if they are it's gonna do the math of course if one of them isn't this if statement is not gonna execute and it's not it's there's not gonna be a problem or any errors so that's good in the sense that we don't have to worry about what our type is anymore. That means that you, we don't have to rely on the user to enter numbers when obviously they can enter letters as well. And this is one function that can be used to do this. Of course, sometimes you want to have strings and then you can use a function that's called toString. And I mentioned this one before, but I'll mention again just for the sake of complicity. And if you try to output the value of true, of course, this always works because the value of true is true. But if you try to kind of combine the value of true with a number for whatever reason, there's going to be an error because it doesn't know how to concatenate a Boolean value. So what you have to do is translate this to a string and then it will know how to concatenate. So what happens is this true value, that is a Boolean value, gets transformed into a string value and then the string value gets con con concatenated with a four. Uh, so this is just a few examples I think that's going to be helpful in our actual practices and just in general and I hope you've learned something from it. So now we can go to our actual example to just show you how we can use if statements in a real world scenario. Okay, so our first example wants us to create a program that reads a user input from the console and checks if the value is a number. If it is a number, we perform the next three checks. If the number is odd or even, if the number is bigger than five and smaller than a hundred, and if the number is a leap year. And a leap year is every number that is divisible by four, but is not divisible by hundred, except if it is divisible by 400. So that means that years four, eight, 12, 400, 800, 1200 are leap years. Remember 400, even though it is divisible by hundred, is divisible by 400, which means it is a leap year. And then years like 100, 200, 300, and 500, which are divisible by four, but are not divisible by 100, are not leap years. It's the leap year challenge is quite taxing and I have two solutions in the example. Give, your, give the problem a try and if you can't figure it out, watch the video and if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments. Okay, so you can see that there's a lot of code here, but don't worry about it. We'll go through it step by step to try to explain what's going on. So our program wants us to input a number, check if it's an actual number, then sees if it's an odd or an even number, and then check if it's a leap year. And there are a few t ways to approach this, but this is my way, as, just to show you. So first of all, we enter a number, we read it, and remember at this point, our number or our variable number is still a string. So we have to force it and try to convert it to an, an actual number. And if this conversion is successful, so that means that we entered an actual number, a variable becomes the type number. And if it's not successful, which means that we entered a word or something else, our number becomes the type nil. So then of course, if you check if our type of the number is an actual number, of course, if it, this is nil, this is not going to pass and none of this is going to happen. But of course, in our case, let's say that we, we are nice as users and we entered an actual number. So first thing we're going to do is check if it's an even or an odd number. So this is just the same thing that we did before. We divide by two and check the remainder. And if the remainder is a zero, then it means it's an even number. And if it's not, that means that the remainder is one, then the number is odd. 
The same check goes for if it's bigger than 5 and smaller than 100. If it's bigger than 5 and smaller than 100, it's in the name, you use the AND operation. You kind of combine these two clauses together and if they both hold true, we print that it's bigger than 5 and smaller than 100 and if it's not true, then of course it's not. Then the leap years. Of course, if you don't know what leap years are, I explained it, but I'll, I do it again vocally. So leap years are every four years, except every hundred years, but then again every 400 years. So that means that the year 4, 8, 12 are all leap years. Years 100, 200, and 300 are not leap years, but then the year 400 is again. And then of course the year 500, 600, 700 isn't, and the year 800 is again. And here I wrote two ways of kind of doing it. And this is just maybe the most optimal way because you don't have to nest ifs as much uh, in the sense that it's all in one line. So first of all, we check if the number is divisible by four. So that means if it's every fourth year. And of course, if it's not, we just say that the, the year is not a leap year. But let's say that it is divisible by four. So that means that it has a chance of being a leap year. Then we check if it's not divisible by 100. And of course, every year that is divisible by 100 is not a leap year. And because we're checking just the opposite situation here, if it's not divisible by a zero, by 100, then that year has to be a leap year. Then we go again. If the number is not divisible by 400, which it means that at this point it is divisible by 100, because of course what happens is if this is true, so that means that this is divisible by 100, we go to this else if clause, and th if this is not divisible by 400 then, then the year is not a leap year. And of course, if that is not true, then it means that our year is divisible by 400, and then it is a leap year. And this may be quite a confusing way of doing things, because it's backwards, so I just rewrote it in the sense of how maybe... Uh, uh, a, a human would approach it from a very logical standpoint. So first of all, we check if the number is divisible by 4. So that means that uh, it is a leap year, or it has a chance to be a leap year. Of course, if it's not divisible by 4, we just output else, it's not a leap year. Then we check if it's divisible by 100. And then, of course, we have to check if it's divisible by 400. And if it is divisible by 400, it means that it is a leap year. And of course, if it is divisible by 100, but it isn't divisible by 400, we go in the else statement, which means that the year is not a leap year. And of course, then we check again if the number is divisible by 100 or is not divisible by 100, but is still divisible by 4, that means that the year is a leap year. So if we run this, you know, we can try it with uh, the year 4. We just see that both functions output that year 4 is a leap year, not functions, but uh, both ways of doing it, output that 4 is a leap year, so if you just enter number 100, it's not a leap year, and if you enter the number 400, it is a leap year again. So that means that our code works, and thankfully it, this is it. You know, this was a, maybe a more expensive example, but I think that this leap year checks really showcase just how you can use ifs in a more complicated way. Of course, maybe it was a bit too much for someone, but that's why I have these solutions at the end, to hopefully help you understand how the, these things are done. And when we get later on, of course, we're gonna be referencing to ifs a lot. And usually if statements, remember, are not very complex by themselves. You know, you don't need to string long expressions, but they are very useful as a tool for a programmer to have whenever you're basically doing anything. So this is the end of this video. I urge you guys, because we are getting into more complex territories, you know, there were a lot of, there weren't a lot of subjects in this one, but it, they were very abstract concepts that I feel that uh, maybe a lot of you, is, it's hard to follow, right? And uh, for, for that, I really urge you, if I explained something badly, or if something wasn't clear enough, please ask questions, urge me to make another video on the topic and try to explain it better if something was not explained well and maybe more examples, you know, anything, just please, if something was not clear, mention it to me. I promise I'll answer all of your questions and don't be afraid to ask because you might not be the only one with that question. And by asking, you're actually resolving a problem for multiple people. With that said, that is it for the if statements and the logical statements. Join us the next time when we'll delve deeper into coding and Lua and hopefully create something even more awesome. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.